settled in 1814 by Jacob Light, they called this little river town New Richmond after Richmond, Virginia. The difference, Virginia was a slave state, Ohio wasn't. I believe that this little village uh, has every bit of uh, the Underground Railroad history uh, that other river towns that are a little more notorious for it uh, uh, have. Greg Roberts is the New Richmond Village Administrator and a village historian. He says there are historical markers all around New Richmond, some designated by the National Park Service's National Underground Railroad Network to Freedom to note the significant roles villagers played. The Ohio River became symbolic as the River Jordan. And once you cross that river, uh, you're in the freedom. Howell Boone, my great-great-grandfather, and his wife came here in the 1850s. Mary Allen still lives in New Richmond more than 170 years after her ancestors arrived. Even though he was a slave, he knew he was treated a little differently and that when he was an adult, he was given his freedom. And so he came here. Allen has done extensive research on African-American families in New Richmond, hers and about 60 others. Let's say 1870 and 1900, there was probably 100 families. There may have been 18% um, of the population, maybe as high as 20, were African-Americans. Some believe one reason why African-Americans went to New Richmond was because it was known to be an abolitionist stronghold. James Burney was a well-known abolitionist newspaper editor. He came to New Richmond and his own quotes were because he knew he'd be protected here. New Richmond was known as a hellhole of abolitionists in those days. The clashes are documented. They weren't just uh, playing around. Uh, when they said they'd kill you, they would. More on that piece of New Richmond's black history tomorrow. Lisa Smith, WCPO 9 News.